what you got. Who's that? Oh, it's my son. Nothing important. Okay, this chart shows what we need. Don't worry, baby. I'm sure he's on his way. I mean, like, I don't want what happened last year to happen. Like this. Right, Go ahead and answer, man. We, we got time. All right, just real quick. Hey. Honey? Are you on your way? Okay. You promised to take him. I know I promised. All right, no, this just isn't my priority right now. This means a lot. All right, he can wait. I'll make it up to him. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, sorry about that. Okay, wait. Did you just hang up on your son? I'll take care of it later. It's not a big deal. Yeah, we'll get this figured out. I, I think that these... I disagree with that one. I, I you mean... know, you could smoke for years and nothing would ever happen to you. What? Well, what does that have to do... What? What, you guys think smoking kills? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you something. Do you know that the leading cause of lung cancer is not actually a cigarette, it's your DNA? What does that have to do with anything? You know, it's funny. I use these arguments, which I made up, by the way, <laughs> with a group of my friends. And the results, five of them believed what I said. Two of them actually started smoking. He's only six. It's not like he's going to remember. Words are just words. Words, when said and articulated in the right way, can change someone's mind. They can alter someone's belief. You have the power to pick someone from the slums of life or destroy someone's happiness using only your words. Okay, you win. I get the point. I'll call my son. No, you don't get the point, Evan. No, I get it. Words matter. Can I please have my phone Man, back? Words only matter if you back them up with action. Did he just steal my phone? He called Collect from prison. Said he was getting out. My dad. Son, I'm getting out today. So I'll be by to see you guys. So tell your little brother I'm coming. Yeah, I know. But this time, I promise. I was 10 years old. My brother was eight. But I can still recall getting so excited that summer day, we actually cleaned our room. And after lunch, we went outside on my grandmother's porch sat down and started waiting. My brother was first to break the silence. Man, what kind of car do you think he's gonna be driving? Bitch, it's a Porsche. We watched every single car that drove by. But the whole time, the sun was descending. And soon, disappointment began to set in. Next, it was my turn to break the silence. You know what? I don't care if he shows up riding a bicycle. My little brother responds, yeah. I don't care if he's walking. You know, the truth is, we didn't care how he got there. We just hoped that for once, he would keep his promise and show up. I don't know why, but we continued accepting those collect calls from my father for years. And my brother and I repeated that process, cleaning our room sitting outside on my grandmother's porch, just watching the sun go down. My friend Nasser, he loved his father, idealized his father. He would do anything to make him happy. But his father was the kind of person who was not easy to impress. First year in college, Nasser got straight A's and he thought to himself, this is it. This is what will finally make my dad proud. He picked up the phone and he called his dad. Dad, I got straight A's. Are you proud? Please tell me you're proud, Father. Look, son, I can't really talk right now. I'm kind of busy. I'm busy. That single sentence was the straw that broke the camel's back. He started drinking. He did drugs. Hang out with the wrong crowd. And every time I asked him, Nasser, why? Why are you throwing your life away? His response is, if the only person that I care about the most doesn't care, then why should I? And then one evening, I got the phone call. Nasser's in the hospital, in the emergency room. Drug overdose. I rushed to that hospital. I saw him on that bed. 
And I saw doctors trying to bring him back to life. Clear! 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 It's clear that a single word could have saved his life. I don't care if it's a pinky promise or the kind where you cross your heart. Children only know that you've made a promise. And somehow they know that promises aren't supposed to be broken. Because when they are, so are hearts. Words are power. Words have power. Words could be your power. You can change a life, inspire a nation, or make this world a beautiful place. Your mouth can spit venom, or it can mend a broken soul. In his absence, my father taught me two very valuable lessons. The first, never let the sun set on your promises. Kids, they will never forget. The second lesson was this. The things that hurt us the most growing up as children, we don't have to repeat them. The hurt and the pain for broken promises, it is right here with me. It is right here with you. By never letting the sun set on your promises.